Hey guys, welcome back to Total Rebuilds and welcome to episode 9 of the TT Rebuild. So in this episode, it went a bit wrong to be honest with the filming, so ignore some of the footage. I left the camera in uh, manual focus after doing my live the other day, but I've managed to capture what I've captured anyway. But we're going to respray the bonnet on the TT because as you can tell it's pretty scabby, needs a bit of attention. So let's crack on. So to start off we've got the DA sander with some 600 grit on and went over the whole entire panel. Unfortunately the damage with the clear coat ran quite deep so we're going to have to go and completely high build primer the whole bonnet. Apologies the camera wasn't auto focusing I didn't realise this till afterwards. And as I'm spraying any pan, I always start around the edges first, then work my way in. I think we've got through about three cans of high build on this to get a decent base. And I bought the rapid set prime, which meant I only had to give it 10 minutes before sanding it. I certainly wouldn't spray this close to the panel ordinarily, but because of the high winds, I had to improvise a little bit and obviously spray a little bit closer than what I'm used to. And in between coats, we're just going to let a quick sand over with some 600 grit, just knock down any highs. And as you can tell, the wind really started to whip up, which has caused me an absolute nightmare. giving each coat about 10 minutes to dry and then just giving it a quick sand just to take down any highs. Now I'm just identifying any areas with particular damage that just need that little extra bit of build on and just going over them first before the next coat. All the work here guys is in the prep. If you don't get the prep right, the finish isn't gonna look right. And if you see any imperfections in the base coat of the primer, it's gonna go through the base coat and then into the clear. So just make sure you fix anything here and now. So now I'm just going to start and lay the base of the colour and as I said before always start at the edge working your way in that way you're never going to miss one of the edges because it's very difficult to see once you actually start spraying the panel. Um, just make sure you get clear even strokes on this and try and cross hatch and change the area of di or the way of direction of the can as well so you don't end up with too many lines. Like I said previously, with the high winds, I'm having to spray really, really close. This is probably three times closer than what I should be spraying this. And as a result of this, you will end up with lines in the base. So you have to be careful to make sure you cover them. Again, we're just going to give it 10 to 15 minutes just to cure between coats. Don't be too quick to put the next coat down because obviously the paint needs to gas out before you, you lock that moisture in. Again, 
Again, because I'm spraying so close, I'm having to mix the direction in which I'm spraying, which you wouldn't ordinarily do. Now you'll notice I've not sanded the base coat at all. I don't like doing that with a rattle can um, because you can end up putting scratches and marks in under the clear which you then can't fix later. So I much prefer to get a nice even base down and then have to sand the clear to uh, try and fix any imperfections. <laughs> that's had four coats of primer, three coats of base, and four coats of lacquer so far. We just need this thing gas out so it goes all nice and smooth, and then give it 24 hours, give it a wet sand, and hopefully we should have some good results. If not, then we can, once we've wet sanded it, we can re-clear it with a nice wet coat. Hopefully that should get the finish, make it pop. So guys, here is the final result. Ignore the white bits, there, blossom. But that has had a compound polish with some P3380. It's then had another compound polish with some Meguiar's cutting compound. And then we've gone in with Meguiar's polish and gave it a thorough polish with a buffing pad. Um, you can see the beads of the water on it. I think for a rattle can job that's cost me about 40 quid, I think that's good enough. Um, we may well wrap the car at a later date anyway, let's see. BDI amongst you would have noticed the smoked indicators, so I took a bit of time while I was here to smoke out the rear lights and the indicators on the side, and I think the final result was pretty sweet to be fair. We achieved this using some Halford's Black It Out spray. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I tried to get some extra content out over the bank holiday to keep you guys entertained. It was a bit rushed, wasn't the best video in the world, but hope, forgive me for that one. I'm hoping the, res the results we achieved with the rattle can kind of made up for it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, catch you on the next one. Cheers, bye. <laughs>